From the world of AV programming and control with James King, I'm Steve Greenblatt, and this is Ask the Programmer. Hey, James, how are you today? I'm doing great, Steve, and yourself? I'm doing well. I'm glad that we're back. And, you know, we, we got uh, some good feedback uh, on our What is an API episode um, from Twitter, and Kevin Maltby uh, reached out to both of us, and that excites me. I'm sure you, you feel the same. And uh, he was talking about how we really did a good job of uh, establishing the difference between programming and configuration. And that, that's something we've talked before in a, in a past episode. And uh, it was Rick really great to hear that he got a lot out of that. Oh, it's always great to hear from our listeners. And yeah, that one seemed to really struck a lot of our listeners, which was great. It's a topic that uh, I think Steve and I really talk about a lot. And uh, we welcome uh, more feedback, and we also welcome guests on our show, uh, just like our, our past episodes. Uh, so, Kevin, if you want to uh, join us and, and keep the conversation going or have a follow-up question, uh, let, just reach out and we'll have you uh, be a part of the conversation. So for today, um, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the the more of the business side of things, um, which programmers, a lot of times, some of them have the really get involved and others don't um, about what, how, how does their role uh, contribute to an outcome and how does their role help an organization, whether the organization is looking to make money based on the deliverable of programming or the, they're, they're looking to satisfy a requirement or make other people's jobs easier or try to help the organization as a whole be more profitable or, or be more successful. Because as we know, what we do, although it can be considered an art, we're still trying to deliver something that's going to help somebody else accomplish a goal or accomplish a task or try to streamline a process or, or even create an outcome that wasn't possible without having an, an AV system to allow them to do so. So in, in our, the reason we're talking about this now too, if you listen back to episode 73, we talked about how uh, programmers are a little under-recognized and, and whether that's in uh, not, not being given enough credit, not being, or, or the AV industry is, is not, um, doesn't have the opportunity to, or is un, uh, unable to bring to the table their, their true value and then get the compensation for it. So James, uh, that was a long uh, introduction, but I want to uh, you know, see, see your thoughts now because we, you and I are kind of on different sides. You know, you, it, it, you know from my side, I, I'm, I'm more of a, a, uh, a provider and, and you can be more of a client, but you have clients to serve as well. And, and the whole in-house integrator model speaks to that. So um, fr from your perspective, wh what are some ways that you can evaluate a programmer and, and kind of demonstrate that value that, that they're providing? So that's, I would say it's hard for us programmers to do that. Um, but the way I look at it is what, outcome are you looking to achieve so for example in higher education my outcome i'm really looking forward is my users my faculty members shouldn't need to call me so if they're calling me normally means there's an issue uh we know technology breaks we know technology fails but if they if i can get a system programmed especially a UI program, but just in general program where a user walks in, I don't need to provide training. I don't need to uh, provide support. I don't need to do that. Like we, I hate using this term, but the hand holding for the system, then I have showed value because now I'm taking out of that resource of answering phone or providing so support for the end user for basically a remote. I mean, how many of our listeners or even people in society call Samsung to say, hey, how do I use this remote? I don't know how to turn on my TV. 
probably very little to none. Um, it's just kind of, we know how to use it. And I, that's the way I look at our, as a programmer, if a user can come in and just use the system without talking to you, then you achieved your goal and showed value. And and that makes a lot of sense too, is, is it? So one of the things that um, I know that businesses run on and that managers need is is metrics or 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 a key per, KPI a key performance indicator something that says this is what your goal was these this is how you're being measured and, and as much as we want to think that programming is is an art form and it and it it shouldn't be something that is is time bound per se because it takes the time that it takes to do in order to justify uh, compensation, there needs to be shown that I've put this money in and this is what I get out. Um, it, it, is that something that you feel or have you seen used in being able to say justify um, somebody's role or or looking at how how much uh, money they should be making or even looking at you know when do I add somebody? So I have, I mean, I'm as a management role, I'm still new. I mean, technically I'm only been a manager uh, since April, end of April. And really I had no buddy under me until the 1st of July. So really about a month I've actually had uh, officially had people under me, you know, I mean, yes, I was leader, a uh, lead and, you know, unofficially I've done things. So measuring KPIs and all that stuff is kind of new to me. Um, I don't like to look at it that way. Um, I understand the value of KPIs, especially in a business world. I'm not taking uh, um, that away. It's very valuable. Uh, but the way I look at it is, as long as we're achieving our goal, especially in higher education, is like if we can get to that point where our users are not calling us about using the system, then my techs are doing their jobs. Or if we're finding the problems before our users are and solving them, so there is no issue, then again, we're doing our job. Um, now, I will always say this in higher ed, though, is we do have a deadline. Our deadline is classes um so and that's a little that's harder a hard deadline on compared to some businesses yes businesses have hard deadlines and stuff like that but let's say let's take a fortune 500 company and they're putting in five conference rooms but you know they're delayed with the supply chain issue you know the businesses can still move forward you know okay we don't use those five rooms yeah, it sucks. You know, we put out that money, we're working on it, but we can do that. I can't in higher ed. Classes start when classes start. Those rooms get used. We are not delaying. We need to come up with solutions. So that's where I think a value of a programmer, installer, techs really come in play in higher education is, okay, something's not working, but we have that hard deadline. Are we meeting that hard deadline? Sure. So, so it's, um, it, it, I mean, which I think everybody can easily point to and speak to and can, can relate to, you know, we, we, it's showtime and we need to be ready and, uh, and, and, and what and we do, what it takes to get there. Um, I, I think, you know, in our industry, that's a lot of times been a driving force. And, um, unfortunately what ends up happening is, is that without those deadlines, sometimes, that's where some of the inefficiencies start to to grow and creep up, and and then you say, um, "Am I getting my money's worth?" Or, or you know, it, should something be taking this long? And some people put artificial deadlines on uh, on on their team or their or um, a particular role because they're trying to make sure that they get more productivity. Um, so that that's certainly one of the, uh, the the components. You know, I I like what you said though, and I wonder if there's some value in in tracking data because we talk a lot about data, uh, tracking data about you know, you know be before the system we got this many calls or before um, having this reprogrammed and now and and after we got this many calls. 
Um, and that to me says, okay, this the the difference here it can can be contributed to whatever upgrades were made. So it might be programming, it may be other things, but you know that that's a great way to be able to show value in in my opinion. I agree. It definitely shows value that I mean, we will never ever get to a zero sum of no calls coming in. Unfortunately, we live in the sure. world of technology. Calls are going to come in. But if I can drop the numbers of calls, especially the numbers of calls of, hey, how do I turn the system on? Or how do I select my stores? Those calls that, you know, it may only take a minute or two. But if you get 10 of those, that's 10 minutes of your time. You get 20 of them, that's 20 minutes of your time. Answering stuff that you're like, well, this is simple. It's not when you actually throw the numbers into it. You think about it. And this is where I kind of summed up some of our classrooms is I'll use simple numbers. Let's take, say a student is paying $100 to take a class, which we know it's much more than that, but we'll use simple numbers. And we have 30 students. That's 30, uh, what, three grand sitting in that classroom. You take that down for 20 minutes. That's 20 minutes. You just wasted three grand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it, it gets even more magnitude magnified in, in the, the business space. Uh, and, and that that's, you know, downtime is certainly so, so may, maybe some of those are some of the things that we could offer to those um, when, when we're looking to try to demonstrate value and we're trying to say that we're worth more um, or, or some ways of elevating what we do try to focus a little bit on the, the cause and effect or the goal or set a goal that we, tr that we have to achieve or, or be able to uh, measure, this is what we, where we started and, th and this is the outcome that we set out to accomplish. And this is the result that we got. And, and then, like you said, tie it to numbers, tie it, tie it to dollars, tie it. So it, by saving this, we this is a cost savings that we had, which then it is it can be attributed to the value that we added. Um, oh, agree. Once we can show, it's, once you can get it down to dollars, everyone can speak dollars. I mean, no one can sit here like you, you know your C suite. It's not going to understand programming. You can't say, oh well, you know, it took me a, a half hour or less to stop this program from. They're not going to care, but you can say, Hey, I just saved the company 50 grand that they're going to be like, sweet, nice. Let's move on. Like, Absolutely. Yeah, no, I know. I like that a lot. So I, you know, I, and what, and, and I don't, and although programmers are very analytical, I don't know how many of them look at it that way. And, and that might be because it, because that our last conversation kind of left me scratching my head a little bit because I do agree that. We we are undervalued and and that we 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 need to elevate ourselves. Um, I do also feel that certain roles are 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 well compensated or or are disproportionately compensated, and and I think in order for them to maintain that, they need to be able to point back and and be armed with that type of data that to say this is this is the this is what I brought bring to the organization. Um, you know another so from. So my perspective and and in being a service provider, we have to look at um, what what is the output that we're getting. So um, how how much are are we getting to be able to bill in a in a in a certain period? And each person on the team has to have their share in that. If you're on the producer side and, and you're and you're one of the ones that are accomplishing the projects, and then if you're on the front end, you have to, you have to be have your share of how much of new business did you bring in, and that those are two ways, not the only two ways, but two ways to be able to demonstrate your your value and say that this is how much I'm worth, and and that then uh, correlates to uh, income and profitability, and and um, the, then the working for an organization that recognizes that is obviously key. A lot to unpack there, but yes, Steve, uh, I 100% agree. There's 
that's how we can show our values, especially if we can get it, boil it down to dollars and cents. Um, cause everyone can speak money. Um, and m money talks, we know that, uh, even in higher education, I mean, we sit here and look about it is you have students coming in and coming out and you're like, well, they're not coming here for the technology. Just like I'm not going to work for uh, Bank of America for the technology. But you know what? If I'm a student and I'm sitting in a classroom and my faculty or my professor is struggling, can't teach me because of the technology, that looks poor in a university. Now I'm looking at other universities, you know, because my education matters. Or if I'm working for a bank and the technology is cumbersome and I'm struggling, I might look for another job where technology is not that cumbersome and uh, in uh, in a way. So, yes, uh, if you can boil it down to dollars and cents, uh, you, you'll see the value. I, and and the last example I could think of, and then and we'll probably uh, bring this one to a close. Is is um, this is also where monitoring systems I think come into play, and and you know you you had talked about support calls, but there's also those ways of being able to say if I put in these tools now i can support more rooms with uh, a smaller staff or i can be more responsive the, again more metrics that we can collect to be able to justify making an investment or justify the the role that a programmer or an av professional brings to the table oh agree and again going with the monitoring and remote accessible Let's go back to the first example I talked about where if I take a call and it takes me 10 minutes to solve it. Now, if I can do it remotely and cut that down to five minutes, and again, these are all numbers, not, not really uh, true numbers. Now I just save time, my money, you know, but the salary that the business is paying for me, I just saved them that time there. Plus now that students in the class, instead of spending, wasting 10 minutes of 30 grand or 30,000, it's now five minutes of 30,000. Uh, 30, you're, you're gaining value there. Yeah. And I think you, you've taken that one step further. If you were able to know the problem existed before the class started, you'd put it out and, and then you'd, they'd have zero downtime. Exactly. So that, uh, I'm glad we had a chance to talk about this one because I think this is important and, and it was it was interesting teasing it out a little bit too and it was a good follow up to the last episode but I'm curious to hear um, how many programmers do and, and and I'm not limiting to programmers you know of course all AV professionals how many how many of you relate your role and your job to some metric or KPI or goal or ha or arm yourself with information and data that you can bring to demonstrate your value. I'm curious to, to see how many people think about that and, and how much of that plays a role in your ability to, to justify uh, your, your worth. Um, so James, uh, how can people get in touch with you, um, continue this conversation, and also learn more about what you're up to? Well, as always, you can find me on Sunday morning at AB and AM on Twitter. My handle is AB underscore James King. Um, I'm also on Twitter besides Sundays, um, LinkedIn, I'm a little more active, uh, but not as much as I plan to get to. I'm trying to get there. I uh, do rate for the higher ed digital magazine, the IT and AV column, Hetman board member. I'm sure if you Google me, you'll find me. Absolutely. And and for me, you can reach me on social media at Steve Greenblatt, um, Twitter and LinkedIn are where I am most active. I'm also doing some writing for AV Network, uh, Commercial Integrator, and my company blog at controlconcepts.net. I uh, also have the another control po podcast on AV Nation called The State of Control. So check that out as well. That's at avnation.tv. And um, we, of course, want to hear from you. And we, we uh, as you've heard in recent episodes, like to have guests on. So please reach out to us, um, share an episode, leave us a comment. If there's another platform that we're that we can be on that would be uh, that we're missing or overlooking, let us know that as well. And um, we we really want to hear from you and make sure that what we're doing is adding value and um, where what you want to hear more of. So please reach out. And with that, this has been Ask the Programmer. <laughs>